My name is Philip Roy Hamilton. I was born in Bristol, Indiana, at a house they called the Old Cause Home. Tell me the fondest memories you remember of your father when you were growing up. <laughs> well, most of it. The, the real fun times of, was fishing. But I'll tell you, that all starts with my dad would say, I'm going fishing in the morning. Are you, you want to go along? And I'd say, well, yes, sure. And he said, well, I'm only going to call you once. Well, he didn't have to because I was awake. And, but we would go to Hunter Lake. And we'd go, it was still dark. And we come home, it was dark. We fished all day long. <laughs> but anyway, that was fun. But I can tell you a story that about my dad that the first time he ever heard him say he didn't have a bad word for anybody but he had installed an electric fence because the the neighbors had cattle and they didn't he put that fence up because they'd break it down and they had hogs too but anyway he had that hooked up had the transformer up on the porch at the house and he wanted me to go down and test that and see if it was working. And I, you know, went down and tried a little bit and I, and I grabbed a hold of it. You know, and he says, you ain't getting shot? And I said, no, you know, nothing. And uh, he said, boy, he said, well, we set it for then for dry weather. So he says, now you try it. And I did touch it, it didn't get any shock. And he said, well, I don't understand it. And he grabbed that, and man, it zapped him good. And he said, you lose. <laughs> you knew that all the time. <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't hear I had tennis shoes on, okay? I wasn't grounded, and he was. And he, he swore I knew that. Tell me about your mom. She was a... She was a, a dandy. My mom was, uh, she, she could cut you up with her tongue if she wanted to and didn't have to cuss doing it. She could, she could slice you, okay? But she's a loving mom. Uh, Tell me about your Uncle Floyd. Oh, my goodness. Uncle Floyd... Loved his women. <laughs> he did. He told he taught me a lot of things I should know and some that I shouldn't. Okay, we'll put it that way. Uh, one story about my uncle Floyd that I'll tell you is that uh, I was probably about seven years old, seven or eight. My granddad had a thirty-five Ford, and. Uh, it had run out of gas, and it was sitting out in the field, and I don't know, Grandpa kind of abandoned it, I guess, for a little bit. But anyway, him and Grandma went to town for something, and they had a different, another car. Well, Floyd decided that we ought to be able to take that car for a little joyride, so he didn't have any gas, but there was five gallons of kerosene. And he put the kerosene in that old Ford, and by golly, it started. But it smoked like it, like if you you could have debugged anything with it. And we went through town, and old, old man White had the DX station at that time. And I tell you, he he couldn't get over that though. But then we had to keep driving it to make sure he got all the kerosene out, you know. But uh, we went all over the place, and he finally took it back out in the field and put her set. <laughs> I understand that your Uncle Floyd was involved with uh, something with the railroad tracks. Oh, you want to you oh tell me that story? Yeah, my Uncle Floyd talked me into going with him down at, well, it was in after dark. 
But the trains and stuff, they were steam engines. Then they'd stop there at the depot. And we go down with a bar of salt and get down there and sneak around in front of the the engine and soak the tracks. Well, they'd take off, they'd get ready to take off, and then they'd hit that soap and they'd go chug, 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 chug. And they'd try it again. <laughs> they couldn't do it get couldn't get any friction, you know, to get going. And here come the conductor. Well, by then we was gone, you know. <laughs> but they used to, here's the thing too, along the railroad tracks, they, we used to get wild strawberries. They'd pick wild strawberries. Well, they had plenty of, of <laughs> fertilizer probably from all them passenger cars, okay. The other thing about trains that people, the kids now don't, they don't, probably don't even, wouldn't know a steam engine from anything. But they used to have what we called the circus train would come through there. My grandparents lived on Chapatula Street across the tracks and that big old house and track went through there. Well, they was, it was common knowledge when the circus train would come through and we'd all get down there and watch and you'd, they had open you know the tigers and all that stuff and it was that was quite the thing tell me a story about a scarecrow oh. <laughs> well this goes there was two guys names that i can really remember dean wall and uh, the Virgil, George Virgil, they had this other guy driving a car, it was like an old Buick or whatever, and they, they took this bib overalls and a shirt and stuff, stuffed it full of straw, and like a, similar to a scarecrow, and they put it in the back seat and they wait for a car. Traffic wasn't nothing then, you know, so you had to wait to get somebody to, that would follow you, they'd get out on the west side of town, about where Raver's Golf Course is now and so forth, and they'd wait, and they'd see a car coming, so then they'd pull out, and that car would get back them, and they'd get the rest from back and forth, make that car that would swing back and forth, and they'd open the door and throw that scarecrow out, and the guy would run over, you know. <laughs> it scared to death to kill somebody. <laughs>